What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday. This is D checking in with a Sunday swim in response to a question from one of my followers that wanted to see the sump. So let me just give you some information on the tank before I show you the sump. The tank is 125 gallons, so it's six feet long, about 18 inches deep. A little under 24 high. I want to say it's about 23, 24 high. It's been a while. It's been running since 2002. And as you can see, it's soft coral because I am a fan of keeping it simple. And I've always done well with soft coral. And I like the fact that I can split them and give them to friends when needed. If they're starting a tank, I can always hit them off with a frag. And, uh, the tank is lit by three 24 inch this sunny LEDs which are controllable dinnable and full spectrum and they have a central controller which is uh, run on the side of the tank if we swing over here if anybody wants more information on the Sunnies check out my video on the Disunny LEDs right now the tank is in wake-up mode because it's I didn't set my clock for it I just realized that I mean set my clock back for full so I have to do that later <laughs> of course the apex automatically did that but the Disunnies have their own controller which I'll just update in a minute uh, the tank is run by WP40 and a CJ pump which I have just swapped out my other WP44 CJ has been running excellent for the past I want to say two months you get a sneak peek at my new addition my copper band butterfly which is still in segregated mode there keeping it separate for a while to make sure he's eaten because uh, I have aptasia and I'm tired of uh, killing it manually. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, back to the tank. Uh, you saw the controller for the lights. And it's early. I haven't turned on the lights in the house. Here's the controller for the JPO WP40. Here's the controller for the Apex. The stand and hood is built by me. It's temperature controlled. This is just for my portable pH monitor that I was calibrating for the tank downstairs. But if I turn these lights back on, you'll see that there are six fans built into the hood. Two are exhaust fans and two are feed fans to keep the tank cool in the summer. The tank has been known to get up to 80 degrees which is another reason why I don't keep SPS up here because the SPS usually take a hit once they hit that 80 81 degree mark so as a rule of thumb keep corals that you can keep don't keep corals that you cannot keep and you will do good in the hobby but to my as far as my sump is concerned because a friend wanted to see the sump I am a fan of the KISS method, and if you don't know what KISS means, it means keep it simple, stupid. This used to be a wet dry. I built this myself. If you want to see information on the build of this sump, check out the video on this sump build. Let me go up to the apex and turn my stand lights on so you can get a better view. Right now my refugium lights are on, so that's what you see lit down here. But my stand is lit by a whole strip of LEDs. This is what I call my bio tower. There is a carbon cartridge in here, which I use from a canister filter. And I use filter floss. I do not use socks because I hate changing socks. Filter floss is incredibly cheap. It keeps this absolutely clear as you can see I get more sediment in the refugium area than anything uh, and this is my buddy Sparky 
He used to be in the main tank until my other clowns paired up. You don't see them now because it's early in the morning and Brooklyn fish get up late. They haven't had their coffee yet. But uh, he chills down here. If I have fish that are fighting up there, or if like I try to add something to a new tank or something, I usually bring it from quarantine down here before I put it in the main tank so that it can get used to the water conditions. Even though you quarantine them, I found it in the last uh, edition of my Pamini tank that keeping them in the sump from quarantine before you put them in the main tank actually does a lot better for them. They just kind of jump right in and do better. But uh, as you can see, this is a very, very simple sump. All it basically does is polish my water, house my protein skimmer, which is a SCA 250. You can see that it's been running for about five, six years, I guess now, something like that. Excellent job, I just cleaned it. So it's breaking in again. Well, didn't really clean the cup, but I cleaned it out. Um, my reactor here, carbon, could be better. Once in a while, I'll run carbon for like a day or two days. That's also controlled by the apex. You can see there's a lot of salt creep on there from uh, this dosing area right here. So that is for carbon. It used to be GFO, but I never saw good results from GFO to balance out the cost of changing the media. So I just run carbon. And never had a real problem with phosphates like that. As I see, the tank is like 13, 14 years old. This is my little Chato Refugium. I, every week, remove a bunch of it. It's a bunch of it squished under that rock right now because I take the Chato out. If I get this sediment, I take the Chato out. Let me clear that up before I have all the Apple guys yelling how unclear my video is. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. <laughs> I'm a Samsung guy. But anyway, I remove a bunch of that every week, feed it to the tangs, or I just toss it, let it grow out again. It's powered by a compact fluorescent, which is a glow light. Let really focus on the light, but regular Home Depot grow light. And I'm powered by a Mag 3. This pump is a workhorse. It's not fancy. It's not controllable, but it has been running for f before the coral went in this tank. I'd say I had this, this pump about 15 years at least. Take it apart, clean it, as you can see, and it keeps on kicking. I have a valve there. If I need to uh, tee off and run, run a line to something else, I can just do it there. But I actually have a manifold that a friend of mine gave me. I just have not put it on here because I really haven't needed a manifold and that's it as simple as it could be all my sump does is house chato polish my water and hold my skimmer um, I used to have a hang on the back skimmer worst thing you can ever do because well, they almost all of them almost always end up putting water on the floor I don't care what model it is always ends up with water on the floor um while we're down here, okay, Sparky, I fed you already. I usually leave the door open so Sparky's not in darkness. I usually leave it like this. But since we're going to go over to this area, which is quarantine slash top off, which you can see I have to add water to. It's not automatically filling. It's an 11-gallon top off. This is a 20-gallon tank with a about six inch partition for quarantining fish. If I have any new fish, they go over in here. It keeps about four gallons of water and it's run on bio cubes, as you can see in the air stone. The heater is not in there right now because I don't have anything in there. So I don't have the heater in there. I took it out for another tank and that is on the to-do list. Good thing I made the video because I forgot. <laughs> I got to get another heater. But basically, this is run by the uh, Tsunami, if I can get a good shot of it. The Tsunami Auto Top Off, which has been running also for about 10 years. And the pump is unplugged because I'm changing the pump. 
that tops off into my uh, sump and that is also checked by the apex I have a float valve over there so if it gets too high it'll shut that off but the tsunami has never failed me there's no moving parts it is a pressure run top off which if you don't know sorry for the shaky video but it's early in the morning that if you can see it let me go here that little thing over there there it is it's a pressure valve I can move this over and drop my phone it's hard to see but there's no moving parts it's run by a Yeah, you can't get it in there, so you're not going to see it. It's a pressure valve. Which means when the water reaches a certain level... Oh, there it is. That will reach the middle, and that will tell it that the water level is low. The water level is low now because I'm cleaned. I'm cleaning the top off, so I have it turned off. But water will pump from this area into the return pump area and then into the tank. I don't have it pumped in here because my fish would get flooded with fresh water right there. So, as you can see also, it's super quiet, the tank, and it's been running for about 13, 14 years. So, let's get up off the floor and give you a shot of everything right now. So, that is the Brooklyn Reef. As you can see, it's mad quiet in my dining area so gets noisy gets hot in here there's my two clowns they're looking for coffee I'm about to have my coffee they usually sit with me and look through the magna viewer as I have coffee the magna viewer is moved because I got this guy up here and that's it the sump is simple it's quiet nothing complicated and it's gonna get simpler because I'm gonna build a new one that is even more efficient so that even I'm going to have my little reactor inside instead of hanging on the side and since I don't use the bio chamber I'm going to clean that up and that's it this is D if you got any questions don't expect anybody to be impressed because people like things complicated I do not I like things nice and simple when things are simple you tend to take care of it better because there's not as much work involved in taking care of it as long as you know the science behind why things work you will do fine in this hobby don't be scared don't be intimidated because you can do anything you want to do as long as your expectations are realistic so with that being said i'm gonna sit down and have my coffee thank you for watching everybody this is d signing out babe love peace and hair grace see ya